within thy gates where we lift up and sing out your praise better is a day in the courts of my king to be in your house I give everything better is a day in the courts of my king where the saints will sing oh the saints will sing we love your house there's nothing better Jesus Christ, strong and mighty is our God, Lion of Judah.
you have to get ready to bear much fruit in 2024 in Jesus' name. Because God is glorified by much fruit. God wants the church to grow. God wants us to take more territory. God is glorified not by our sitting and soaking. God is glorified by much fruit. You believe God for bigger things. You go for greater things. Because the Bible says that people who know that God shall be strong and carry out great exploits in the name of Jesus. That your best thought, God can better than Your biggest dream, God is bigger than that. Your biggest expectation, God is bigger than that. God is bigger than that. There's nothing small about God. And when God is your partner, you make big plans. family we are back together for our sunday service it's great to have you all with us today now let's stand to our feet for praise and worship good morning family this is the day that the lord has made come on let us rejoice this morning please join us for praise and worship i wish i could tell you wish i could describe it come on i could contain it and keep it to myself they're running up colors to paint the whole picture. They're running up words to ever say what I found. Wonderful and beautiful and glorious and holy. He is merciful, powerful. Who are we talking about? That's my king. We declare the glory. Give him all the honor. All together worthy. Talking about that's my king. There's no one before you. Yes, we will adore you. All of us is for you. Who we're talking about? That's my king. Jesus, you're my. All of this is for you. Who are you talking about? That's my king. Hey. Hey. That's my king. That's my God. That's my shepherd. My protector. That's my king. That's my rock. That's my anchor, my defender. That's my king. That's my God. That's my shepherd, my protector. That's my king. That's my rock. That's my anchor, my defender. Hey, who are we talking about? That's my king. Give him all the honor, 
Church, are you ready to praise the Lord this morning? Watching into the night, watching a place to hide is really so. It's like a When I try with all my might, but I just can't be defined, I'm slowly drifting. A vagabond. Just when I ran out of road, I met a man I didn't know, and he told me that I was not alone. Oh, he picked me up, yeah, and turned me around. He placed my feet on solid ground. I thank the master, I thank the savior, because he healed my heart and changed my name. Not in our what I see. Got no choice but to believe my times are burning like ashes in the wind. So, so long to my old friend. Burning and bleeding. There's you can just keep it moving. Hey, now you are welcome here. From now till I walk, streets of cold, I'll sing of how you saved my soul. This way was I, and found his way back. Oh, 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 he picked me up, he turned me around, he placed my feet on solid ground. I'll take the master, I'll take the savior, because he healed my heart and changed my name. Another one, are you free? Oh, are you free? Oh, are you free? So we lost another one, are you free? Oh, are you free? Oh, you free? Oh, you free? Oh, do you believe it? So we lost another one, I am free. Oh, I am free. Oh, I am free. And lost another one, lost another one, I am free. I think the Savior, I think God. 
this morning for two that we do not have because we do not ask so this morning come in faith come and ask God for that job come and ask God for that breakthrough this morning we have pastors and leaders that are waiting to pray with you and trust God with you because God is ready to meet you at your point of need please make your way to the front right now as we continue to worship in Jesus
One love that melts a heart 
Come on, what an amazing presence of God. He's worthy. Hallelujah. Come on, He's worthy. Come on, give Him praise in this place. Hallelujah. Worthy is the Lamb. Come on, worthy is the Lamb. Right there on Facebook, on YouTube. Thank you for joining us. Come on, won't you worship Him? Right there in your homes, right there in your car, wherever you're sitting. Come on, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb that was slain for our sins. He's worthy. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give Him praise. Oh, come on, you can clap better than that. Come on, we worthy is the Lamb. Come, let's get the temperature up in here. Come on, we haven't come to seek, man. We're not worshiping some rugby game. Come on, we can serve the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords with every breath that's in us. Hallelujah. David said, extol the Lord with me. Bless the Lord with me. Magnify the Lord with me. I will exalt the Lord. I will bless His holy name. Amen. Amen. Come on, greet somebody next to you. Say, welcome into the house of God. Come on, greet iemand anders. Come on, greet somebody. Extend yourself beyond yourself. Come on, before you sit, greet others. Welcome them into the house of God. Come on, you so welcome. If you're first time visiting here this morning, you are so welcome. You are special guests. Come on, let's just welcome all our first time visitors here today in Jesus' name. Amen. Are you ready? Come on, can you say Jesus? Amen. That name is still the name that is above every other name. There's no greater name, amen, in the heavens, on the earth, and underneath the earth, amen, that man has been given. And we are here today to glorify the name of Jesus. The Bible says, David said, I was glad when I came into the house of the Lord, amen. So it's not a sad place. It's not a sad day. It's a great day to be in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. You may take your seats. Come on, we, our expectation and anticipation is God's invitation. We never come neutral into the presence of God. Say so, amen. I want to preach a very short message this morning. As short as it can be, like Elizabeth Taylor said to her eight husbands or nine husbands, I won't be long. I'll be as quick as I can. But come on, are you ready? I mean, open up your hearts, put your hand on your hearts this morning. Hallelujah. Say, Lord Jesus, I open up my heart to your word. Thank you for renewing my mind according to your word. Thank you for setting me free. I surrender to you everything right now. Spirit, soul, and body. I receive your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, as we get a ready heart this morning. I want to speak about a story, my message this morning. A good work. Philippians chapter 1 verse 6. Being confident of this very thing that he who has begun. A good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. I want to tell you my brother and my sister, the good work that God has begun in you. He's going to complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Amen. You're getting better and better as you stay in the presence of God. Amen. Tell your neighbor you're not going to stay like you are. Tell him you're getting better. You're getting better. Tell him you're getting stronger. You're getting stronger. Come on in Jesus' name. In Amplified Version, the Bible says, I am convinced and I am confident that this very thing that He has begun, a good work in you, will con or continue or perfect and complete it until the day of Jesus Christ, 
return. I want to speak about a story this morning about a Shemanite woman in the Bible. 2 Kings chapter 4 verse 8 to 10. The Bible says, Now it happened on a day that Elisha went to Shimon. There was a notable woman, an influential woman. She was there and the Bible says, just paraphrasing a bit, she persuaded him to eat some food. And it happened that so often or whenever he came to town, he would come around and visit and eat some food. This man of God would walk into town. And I love this woman because she says to her husband in verse 9, she says, look now, I can see that this is a holy man of God. I can see the presence of God all over him. Now I ask you, my husband, please, he comes here regularly. He comes to Port Elizabeth, to Jay Bay regularly. He's a man of God. And please let us make a little upper room on the wall. And let us put a bed for him and a table, a chair and a lampstand. That whenever he comes to us, he may turn in there. You know, I love this woman because she's a smart woman. She recognizes the presence of God and she makes room in her house for the presence of God. She discerns the presence of God. She's a very smart woman. She says, I need to make a space and a place for the presence of God. I need to have a place that's separate for God. Elisha, a type of Christ, and she's coming into that town and she says, listen, I'm not going to let this moment pass me by. I'm going to make a place. I haven't come to church to just watch a service, but i got a place in my heart for this God and I love this God and I want to make a place and a space for Him, a dwelling place, amen, for Him that is comfortable, amen, that I'm comfortable in His presence. I long for a relationship with this God. She's not just seeking a sermon, but she wants a relationship. She wants fellowship because God made us for fellowship. Not just a one, a one night stand. Not just a one prayer God. He's a God of fellowship. He's a God of relationship. And she discerns that. While everybody didn't bother about the man, but she said, I'm going to make space for God. I'm going to open up my heart towards God. I want a place where God can be comfortable in my midst. Where He can just walk in and eat whatever He wants. Where He can come into my life and speak to me about whatever He wants to speak to me about. He can touch the areas He needs to touch. He can open the doors He needs to open. I want Him to have free access in my life. I want to ask you, my brother and my sister, have you made room for God? So many times we want God to make room for us, but we do not make room for God in our daily lives. I said it in the half night prayer that God is not, prayer is not a moment, but it's a lifestyle. I pray that you get beyond a moment of worship to a lifestyle of worship, a place where it's constant communication with God, where you're constantly talking to Him, a fellowship, a relationship with this most high God. God, I love you. God, I care for you. God, I thank you. Oh God, I'm so in love with you. Father, I just thank you for how good you have been to me, how far you brought me. Father, I thank you for, from my rising up to my going to sleep. Father, you said you're the same yesterday, today and forever. I thank you that you'll never leave me nor forsake me. Father, I thank you, Father, that you guided me, that my steps are ordered. Father, I thank you, Lord God, that I'm above and not beneath. Father, I thank you, Lord God, that I'm blessed going in and blessed going out. Just a relationship with God. Oh, how beautiful it is to have a relationship with God. We thank God for the church and this house is the presence of God, but amen. We know that the church or the building is not God. Amen. We are the church. Amen. We're just coming together as the saints. But there's nothing greater than the fellowship and the gathering of the saints. You better make room for God in your life, in your home, in your business, in your relationships, in your career. This woman is an influential woman. You might sit here and be very influential like this woman. But are you making space? You're making that place for God. So He feels free. Does God feel free in your home, in your heart, in your business, in your marriage, in your relationships? Does He have, does he have free, free space? Whenever He wants to just show up and say, hey, 
I want to talk to you now. I want to just have fellowship with you now. Or is he limited to a certain time, a certain place, and a certain doorbell, or a register? God have to phone, hi, I want to come, or can he just rock up? Many times, I've been at my table, many times at my dinner table, you can ask my kids, and the presence of God will just touch me, and I'll get on my knees next to that table, because he's so welcome, whether it's on the dinner table, whether it's on the couch, whether it's in the car, he has free access to my life. And I pray you may give him free access, that whenever he wants to just come and love on you, and just come and exhort you and come and correct you and come and wash on you and come and pick you up. Allow Him to do that. Make a space in your heart. Make a space and a place for Him. Second, chapter, Second Kings chapter 4. Bible says, And it happened on the day when they turned in to that upper room and he lied down there. Verse 12, And he said to Gehazi, or Gehazi, however you want to pronounce it, He said, Call the Shemanite woman. And when he called her, she stood before him and he said to her, Now, look, you've been concerned for us with all this care. You've been faffing about us. You've just been caring about us. I can see your heart towards God. I can see how you love God. She said, What can I do for you? Do you want me to speak on behalf of the king or the commander of the army? And she said, I dwell amongst my own people. I'm fine. I haven't blessed you and I haven't made a space for you because I want something from you, God. I just love you, God. I haven't made a place for you because I want you to do something for me. I just love you being in my place. I discern who you are and I just love fellowship with you. I didn't just build a room so you can bless me. I just want to be in your presence. I just long to be with you. I'm not praying for what I can get. I'm praying for who you are. I love you because of who you are and not because of what you can do. I just love being in your presence God and this man can't do anything for her because she's not really seeking anything and I pray that you walked in this church this morning maybe not even asking for anything just to lift up his holy name just to say that you are good and you are merciful and I'm so thankful that I have another breath of air this morning and you've been good to me even when I haven't been good even when I miss the mark you come again and again and you love me over and over and over and over even although I did, you know, don't deserve it sometimes, you are just so good. Oh, come on, is there anybody that can jump up to their feet and say thank you, God, for being good in my life? Oh, come on, give Him praise this morning. I hope you are still awestruck by God. That you are just awestruck by Him. I'm just fine to be in your presence. And this man says in verse 14, what then shall be done for her? I have to do something. That's God because he can see our heart towards him. And Gehazi said, actually she has no son and her husband is old. I'm sure she married a sugar daddy. Husband was old. Said mooi getro. She was influential. She married right. Like some of you, I'm joking. I got my blessing. Father, I'm fine. <laughs> hey, her husband was old. That's it. Stop interpreting wrong. So he called her. And when he had called her, she stood at the doorway and he, she, he said, about this time next year, you will embrace a son. And she said, no, my Lord, man of God, don't lie to your maidservant. Don't lie to me. You know, when you look at the story, she probably couldn't fall pregnant. Maybe her husband was old and he couldn't have any kids. And this was probably a desire of her heart. And when the pastor or the man of God speaks to him and says, you're going to be pregnant, same as Sarah, she says, don't lie to me. This can't happen to me. It's impossible. Don't play with my emotions. Don't lie to me. I put that dream away. That's not going to happen in my life again. My season is past. It's over for me. I've given that thing rest. I put it to rest. Don't lie to me. 
Don't lie to me. I put that dream away. I, I know, I know that God is good, but He can't do that for me. He can't do that miracle for me. I put that away. Don't you lie to me. Don't you tell me that this God can give me a child. It's impossible. I've settled it in my heart. And my, my husband is too old. I cannot fall pregnant. Things cannot happen in my life. I love this God, but there's certain things He cannot do. She might be in that place. You might find yourself in that place this morning where you say, I don't know what dream you put away this morning, child of God, but I want to tell you, don't put that dream away because of fear or disillusionment or disappointment or betrayal. I want to tell you that this God is not a God and that He should lie. He's not a man that He should lie, that He should change His mind. The Bible says, will He not do it? Have I not spoken it? Will I not fulfill it? I want to tell you this morning that the good work that God has begun in you, that He will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. I want to tell you my friend and my brother and my sister God is still able God is still reliable God is still willing God is still capable I want to tell you that the Bible says it's the same yesterday today and forever Malachi 3 verse 6 the Bible says I am the God that changes not James chapter 1 verse 17 the Bible says every good and every perfect gift comes from the Father above with the Father of lights, there's no variation and no shadow of change. I want to tell you, God can resurrect a dead dream. God can make a miracle in the midst of a storm. God can open doors. God can close doors. God can resurrect dead things. God can bring the change that you need in your life, in your marriage, in your relationships, in your child, in your circumstances. Oh, you don't put it away like this woman. Don't lie to me. Oh, the prophet said, I'm not lying to you. About this time next year, you will have a child. And I want to tell you, you better not put that dream away. You better not put that vision away. I think of it. You can hear. I mean, imagine the pastor speaking to the prophet and he says, don't lie. Because he touched the button. He touched a button. Maybe you're sitting in this place and you say, oh, pastor, but you don't understand. Maybe you're saying, don't lie. I want to tell you, he's not a man that he should lie. The Bible says in Numbers, he's not a man that he should lie. He will fulfill it. It might look impossible. It might look so far off. You will fulfill it. I tell you, God can make the dead bones come alive. God can make the rocks cry out. God can make a turn around. God can make turn nothing into something. God can turn an ash heap, amen, into a treasure. God can change things. Oh, God is still the God of the impossible. Can you say amen this morning? He wants to give you the desires of your hearts. This is obviously a desire of this woman's heart. He touched a button. And I pray this morning that the Holy Spirit may touch something. Something that you've put away. Maybe you think you're too old. You can't start a business. Talk to Colonel Sanders. Say, I'm over 50. It's impossible. God says, it's not impossible. Maybe you put it away. You put it away. And God said, no, no, no. You're not putting that thing away. I've ordained it over your life. I've called you to do great things. I've called you. I've called you. I've called you by name. I've separated you in a mother's womb. You're called in this generation. You're called to make a difference. Come on, you might be a politician and you feel your hands are tied. Come on, God is still the God impossible. He used a Daniel. Come on, he can use a Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. He can use you too. It just takes a person to stand up. It just takes a person, amen, to forget what the enemy says and to step into the call of God in your life. Say, God has a plan for my life. Oh, come on, say it with confidence. God is not finished with me. Say, God is not done yet. Oh, come on, give Him praise this morning. He's not done. He's not done. He's not finished. I don't care how old you are, how young you are. Sometimes we limit God to age and God doesn't see age. He sees a spirit that's on fire. He sees an open spirit, a willing spirit. Amen. Your spirit doesn't have age, man. It has age you grow, but you understand what I'm saying. Your flesh is dying. Your spirit is getting stronger and stronger. So listen. Second Kings chapter 4. And the woman conceived and bore a son. And when he... The appointed time had come, of which Elijah had told her. So she gives birth, a miracle. And the child grew. And it happened one day 
that he went out to his father, to the reapers. And he said to his father, my head, my head. And so he said to his servant, carry him to his mother. I mean, this is a father that's not involved. He's not involved here. Carry him to his mother. See, there's something when you have birthed something, you take responsibility. Take responsibility. If you look in the story, that father was always absent. Now, I don't know, maybe he was old, maybe he felt I didn't really want a child. I didn't know what the, st- the case was. But he says, take him to his mother. They brought him to his mother. And when they had taken him to, when they had taken him, they brought him to his mother and he sat on her knees till noon and then he died. The very dream she didn't want. This thing dies. I can imagine the fear. I can imagine the disappointment. But I told you, God, don't lie to me. I didn't want to open myself up again for forgiveness. I didn't want to open myself up. Make myself vulnerable. I come out of a divorce. I can't make myself vulnerable again. I know you have plans for me, but not like this. And the very thing starts to die in her hands. And I think of the trauma that she must have faced. Because this boy, this dream actually came to fruition. She's lying there with this dead boy in her hands. The Bible says in verse 21, And she went and laid him on the bed of the man of God. She shut the door upon him and went out. And she called her husband and said, Please send me one of the young men and one of the donkeys, that I may return to the man of God and come back. I love the confidence in this woman. I'm going to come back. I'm going to come back different. I'm going to come back changed. I'm not going the same. I want to go back to with a source. She says, I'm going back. And the man doesn't even care about the son. That's why I say he was uninvolved. And then he says, where are you going today? Doesn't ask about the kid. Said it's neither noon, new moon or Sabbath. And she says, it is well. It is well. Peace be with you, chill. I'll be back. I'll be back. This is not the end of me. This is not the finish stop. This is not a full stop. It is well with me. Bible says she saddled that donkey. Think of this woman and said to her servant, drive and go forward. Don't slacken the pace for me unless I tell you. And she departed and went to the man of God, Mount Carmel, 40 kilometers away. So it was when the man of God saw her afar off. And he said to his servant, Gehazi, look, the human woman, please run to meet her and say to her, is it well with you? Is it well with your husband? And is it well with your child? And she said, it is well. I mean, there's a dead boy at home. She's not saying anything. She's like, it is well, it is well. When she came to the man of God on the hill, she caught him by the feet and Gehazi came near and pushed away. She was not allowed to touch a priest or a prophet. And the man of God said, let her alone. Her soul is deeply distressed. The Lord has hid, hidden it from me and has not told me. And she says to him, did I ask, my, did I ask a son of my Lord? Did I say I want a baby? Did I say I want a child? Did I say it? Did I not say to you, don't deceive me? Look at this, I'm hurt again. Look at this, I'm broken again. And I trusted in you again. And look at what's happening in my situation. Did I not say to you, don't deceive me? Oh, sometimes we go through so much trauma that we get angry with God. I don't know, some of you are sitting in this place and you're angry with God. God, why have you done this? I want to tell you it's not God. Life happens, my friend. Life happens, my sister. Now I want to tell you we serve a loving God and a good God and He's not out to get you and punish you. And I'm so sorry for what has happened, but I want to tell you that God can make amends and God can make things new and God can change things around. If you would just trust Him, if you would just rest in Him, He can turn it around. She says, didn't I not say don't deceive me? And then He said to Gehazi, Get yourself ready, take my staff in your hand and be on your way. If you meet anyone, anyone, don't greet them. If anyone greets you, do not answer. Lay your staff on his face of the child. And the mother of the child said, As the Lord lives and your soul lives, I will not leave you. I'm not going to leave you until I get my child back. I'm not going to leave you until something shifts in my spirit. Until something changes. I'm not leaving you. I'm not leaving you. And he arose and followed her. Now I want to tell you, that really, life does happen to us sometimes. 
really got nothing to do with you or what you did. It's just life. It's life. Life happens. We can walk out this church this morning. Wind can blow and a stone can land up in your eye. That's not God. That's life, sir. Maybe you're at home and you experience some losses. I want to tell you it's life. We live in a fallen world. But we have a God that is risen. We have a God that is still a comforter. We have a God that is still a healer. We have a God that is still a caretaker. He's still an advocate. Amen. He's still a helper. He's still a God that can do miracles. And this human woman, she shows remarkable, remarkable faith. I want to go back to the story. Number one, the Bible says she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God and shut the door behind her. Number one, she brings him back to the source. She brings him back to the source of his presence. She brings him back to the altar she created. You know, there's something great when you've created a space for you and God in your house. You can bring it back to that altar because that thing was birthed at that place. That dream was birthed at that place. Thank God. When you're in the presence of God, He told you, I'm going to give you the vision. And when things happen, we can come back to the place in the space, that altar. And we can lay that son at the altar again and say, Father, this is where the miracle started. And I thank God I can bring it back to the place where it started. I can lay the miracle. I can lay this miracle down at your feet again. Because I didn't birth this. This was birthed in your presence. And this was birthed in your very presence. And I come into your presence boldly and I lay this thing down I come and bring it back to the source and I want to tell you there's no other source than Jesus Christ we cannot lay our problems in front of other men in front of our friends in front of other situations we gotta lay it in front of God yes we thank God for wise counsel but we gotta lay it in the presence of God where it was birthed in that place she made a room and in that very room the miracle came that place of relationship that place of fellowship where you can come and talk to God and you can weep to him hey God I don't understand it I really don't understand it how is it that this could have happened to me how is it I'm feeling kind of the solution at this moment it's hurting my heart is hurting my wife has just left me I don't understand it father I don't understand it, Father, but I'm here in your presence and I seek, I'm seeking you. I'm seeking your guidance and I know I'm going to find peace and I know I'm going to find the answers. I want to encourage you. Don't run to alcohol. Don't run to another woman. Run back to the presence of God. Those things can only, only cure your flesh for a moment, my child, my daughter, my son. It can only help you for a moment. It can only numb the pain. But I want to tell you there's somebody that can take the pain away. There's somebody that can heal your broken heart. And His name is Jesus. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He will do it again. And she lays him down in that room. And she says, the same God that gave me this boy is the same God that will raise this boy. The same God. If it's birthed in the Spirit, it can be sustained in the Spirit, by the Spirit. But if it's birthed of the flesh, you'll have to maintain it. That's why it's so important that we make a place. She carries him back in the presence of God. I trust you, Lord, even when it doesn't make sense. I know you're going to sort this thing out. It's too big for me to carry. Where's my young man? It's too big for me to carry. It's too big. Now I want to tell you, some of you are carrying dead bodies all around. You're carrying dead bodies. And I want to tell you, this thing is going to become heavy. It's going to become burdened. Some of you are carrying pain. You're carrying anxieties. You're carrying depression. And you won't lay down. And what happens, life becomes heavy. Life becomes hard. Because you're carrying the weight that is not meant to be yours. Some of you can't let go of the things that are dead. You can't let go. But you're just holding on. You're holding on to things that you have to put at the altar of God. 
you have to let it go because some of you are starting to walk heavy because you're carrying a burden that's not supposed to be yours. You've got to lay down at the altar of God. You've got to lay down in the presence of God. You, can, you can't carry that pain. You cannot carry that depression. You cannot carry that anxiety. You've got to put it at the presence of God. You're not meant to carry it. That's why it says, come unto me, all he that are heavy laden. Some of you are heavy. You heavy through disappointment. Oh, Father. Oh, God. And God is saying, let it go. But I can't, Father. You don't understand the pain. And you're carrying the pain. And all you have to do is let it go. So God can heal you. Now I want to tell you, my brother and my sister, I don't know why it happened to you. The abuse. Maybe your husband cheating on you. A child that has run away. Maybe you've been going to church all your life. You say, God, I sow. But look what happens. I made a room for you. I made a place for you. I want to say it's not your job to question. It's your job to bring it back to the source. And you lay that boy down at the altar again. You lay that pain down at the altar again. You give it to God again and you walk away. And you put it in His hands. Jesus said, Amen. Come on, let's give Him a round of applause. I mean, my heart rate is up here. I, it is. I'm breathing hard because it became heavy. Oh man, I can feel the Holy Spirit. Part of, part of you, some of you have walked in here heavy. You're carrying the world's problems on your shoulders. You're taking a load that's not meant to be yours. And you're out of breath. Can't serve God the way you used to. Come back. Let it go. John 14 verse 6, the Bible says, Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. 1 Peter 5, 7, the Bible says, cast in your cares upon Him because He cares. Cast it over this morning. Come on, put your hand on your heart this morning. Just close your eyes. I don't know what you are carrying. I don't know what losses you've experienced. They're at the back. I don't know. But you can't carry it. You're not going to solve this one on your own. You're going to have to lay it down. I get this quad. That moet nie gebeur. Moes nie gebeur nie. Maar dit het. You shouldn't experience that abuse. Lay down. Forgive. Forgive. Let it go. Let it go. She laid that body down at the altar. Jesus says, Amen. In Matthew 11, come unto me all those who are heavy laden. In the message version, it says, are you tired? Are you worn out? Are you burdened on religion? Come to me and get away with me and recover your life. I will show you how to take a real rest. Rest. Walk with me. Work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy and ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me. You learn to live freely and lightly. She laid that body on the altar. Number two. The Bible says in 2 Kings, she went out, up and laid the body on the bed of the man of God and she shut the door. Number two, she shut the door. She closed the door. That door of doubt. That door of fear. She said, I'm not going to take, I don't accept this in Jesus' name. I do not accept this. I close this door in my life. I close this chapter. And when I open this door again, I will see life. I will see living. I will see this boy alive. I don't accept this. 
I close this door. This is not my portion. This is not how the story ends. And she shuts out the negative voices. She shuts out the voices of unbelief. She shuts out the voices of fear. She shuts out the voices of doubt. And you better shut out the voices of fear, the voices of disbelief. You got to shut that door. You got to close the door. Oh, there's some voices that are bothering you. You got to close that door. You got to shut that chapter in your life and stop rehearsing and going back. Next time I open this door, the situation is going to look different in the name of Jesus. I laid him in your presence and I shut the door because I know in your presence there's fullness of joy. I know like Aaron's body to live again. I know as he rests in your presence, you are busy working it out for my good. I know you are turning the situation around. I can close the door confidently that the next time when I open up this door, things will be different. My child will be back. My husband will be back. I'm not going to walk in fear. I'm not going to walk in doubt. I'm not going to walk with anxiety. I'm not going to walk troubled. I'm not going to have a weight on my shoulder. I'm going to walk free. I'm going to walk confidently. I'm going to say, it is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. It is well with me, with my husband and with my boy. It is well. God is going to finish the good work that He has begun. He will do it. He will complete it. Can you say amen? So she shuts that door. Proverbs 35, 3 verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Do not lean on to your own understanding. In all your ways you acknowledge Him. He will direct your paths. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. Proverbs uh, Psalms 125 verse 1. The Bible says, Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion. They cannot be moved. It abides forever. You are not shaken when troubles come. I will not be moved when situations come. I am like Mount Zion, the church. I'm built on the rock, which is Jesus Christ. I shall not be shaken. I shall not be moved by the storms. I shall not wither. I will bear fruit in season and out season. I'm like a tree that's planted by the rivers. Oh, my roots are deep. My roots are deep in Christ. It's deep in the house of God. I'm established on the Word of God. Oh, come on. Psalms 118 verse 8. It's better to trust in the Lord than to put your confidence in man. Psalms 20 verse 7. The Bible says some trust in chariots. Some trust in horses. But I will remember the name of the Lord. Some trust in their income. Some trust in their accolades. Some trust in their, their finances. But I will trust in the name of the Lord. I can tell you there's a place in life. Life can happen where no finance can help you. Where no friend can help you. And you have to make sure that that thing is in the presence of God. Because it's you and God alone. And you better be confident that the door of fear is shut my brother. And you have to stand strong in the Lord and you have to trust the Lord because no man can help you when your back is against the wall. You have to have an anchor for your soul and that anchor is Jesus Christ. Oh, come on. Can you give God praise this morning? Can you jump to your feet? Not because of anything else, because He's good in Jesus' name. Oh, church, come on. Philippians 1. He that has begun the good work will finish it and complete it. So she shuts the door. And some of you need to shut doors. Number three, she speaks life and not death. She lays him at, a, at his feet. She shuts the door and she speaks life and not death. She speaks the word and not a doubt. Second Kings, the Bible says, she called to her husband said, please send me one of the young men and one of the donkeys that I may run to the man of God and come back. That's why I said this man was, I mean, I think of how that woman, how anchored she must have been because she's the one who wanted to make a room. And sometimes you can be with a spouse that's not on fire. But you can't allow their lack for God to infect you. Their lack of hunger to affect you. She's a woman on fire. And this man, she says, let's make a room. He is the man. And I want to say, that's why I'm having this men's conference. I want to say, men, we, it's great that your wife is on fire, but your wife can't be more on fire than you. How is that? You are the head of the house. You are the head of the house. 
You are leading this house. You are leading that home. You have to be on fire, man. Your wife can't be more spiritual than you. How is that possible? And I know we're growing. I love my wife, but my wife is not leading the home. I'm leading the home. Now I have to make decisions. I'm not going to, I pray with my wife, thank God, but I, I have to make the decisions. And I have to be walking with God and I have to be talking with God. And yes, she loves God and it will be confirmation on the decision I make. But I better be walking with God because that woman has to follow you and that kids have to follow you. I know I don't get amens in this place. You got a young boy and he sees uh, uh, your wife's more on fire than you and you are carnal. I know it's quiet. It's not right. Can the men say amen or amen? <laughs> it's not condemnation. We are leaders. That's our lack in our nation. Where men don't rise. Take responsibility. This man didn't take responsibility. More worried where she's going. What are you spending? What are you doing? And the boy? You're absent. Okay, let me not go there. But let me be nice. <laughs> it's the truth. It's the truth. It's the truth. As a young man, I want a leader. I want a leader. I thank God for my mother that prayed. But there's nothing like a man. It's not better. There's a different role. There's a different role. So that husband, and listen what he tells her. I, I mean, I love this woman. She's smart because she realizes this guy, I, I don't know if he was unspiritual, but he says, where are you going? It's not new moon. It's not Sabbath. And, and she says, it is well. I mean, she can't, uh, what a place to be in when your son dies, but you can't deal with him because he's negative. She's experiencing the trauma of a life and she can't lay, she can't. Think of that. If you're the husband and your wife can't tell you that your son has died because you just don't get it. Boy's going through stuff, but you just don't get it. Where are you? More worried or control. But here, my discerning. Think of it. Imagine you the man and she never told you. Would you be angry? But what can you do because you don't know the presence of God? Not you, the empty chair. My friend, what must we do? I'm going to the prophet. I don't know what you do. I'm going to church. I don't know what you do. You can sit here, but I'm getting out of this hole. I'm getting this child risen again. I'm getting this baby up again. I'm going back to the house of God. I'm going to get myself on fire. I'm going to get the love of God back in this home. I'm going to take responsibility. I'm not just going to sit here and watch this. I'm going back to the man of God where the miracle was birthed. I'm going back to the house of God where this marriage was birthed. We started this marriage in prayer. It's not going to end like this. Oh, come on. If I don't speak the truth, then rather leave. So she says, it is well. I mean, she put him there. She shut the door and she says, it is well. She speaks words of life. Words of life. Calling the things which are not as though they are. What we say at the beginning of the storm will determine how we go through the storm. It is well. What we say at the beginning of the storm will determine how we go through the storm. It is well. I'm coming out on the other side. The Biazakai can for honor. It's gone for honor. Something is going to change. I, de I declare it. This child is going to walk again. This baby is going to come alive again. It is well. It is well with me and my soul. It is well with my wife. It is well with my, my, my child. It is well with my home. It is well. 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 I speak life. It is well. It is well. It is well. Can you say this morning? It is well. 
Say, it is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. Some of you just need to get out of your comfort zone, man. This boy is going to live again. This boy is going to stand up again. That business is going to come right again. Rise up on the inside. It is well. Hallelujah. We speak life and death. Proverbs 18 verse 21. Death and life are in the power of your tongue. Those who love it will eat the fruit thereof. Now, 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 this little boy is dead. Let's not be too spiritual. Now let's, let's look at the facts here. This boy was not birthed with facts. This boy, I didn't even want the boy. I said, don't lie to me and God gave me the boy. This child is a miracle. And the same miracle that I got, it will be sustained. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. This thing was not birthed in the flesh and God has built this church and the gates of hell will not prevail. That's why it's so important that the dream is birthed in the spirit because, or in the presence of God, because it becomes sustainable through the presence of God. Otherwise, you're going to sustain it in the flesh. Has to be. Proverbs 6 verse 2, the Bible says, You are snared by the words of your mouth. Are you speaking, my brother and my sister, Rin? What are you saying? Are your words, are you taken by the words of your mouth? Proverbs 13 verse 2, the Bible says, A man will eat well by the fruit of his mouth. By, by the soul of his, listen, you will eat well by the fruit of your mouth. Your mouth is putting the bread on the table. Your mouth is paying the bills. Because what you say is what you have every day. Because that voice becomes, it becomes a belief every time you speak. It becomes a belief. So what you see becomes very important because it determines what you say. And what you say determines what you believe. And what you believe determines what you have, your destiny. The Bible says in Deuteronomy 30 verse 19, I call heaven and earth as a witness to you. I said before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore choose life. You choose. You choose what you're going to say. You have to believe the word of God. I love this woman. She takes that donkey and she rides on that donkey and she says, I'm coming back. The prophet sends the Gehazi to come as she approaches the hill and he says ask her how is she and she says it is well with my husband it is well with my boy the boy's dead she says it is well it is well it is well it is well hallelujah with my soul come on no matter how you feel hold on to your good confession don't walk when Satan attacks you, watch what you say. Don't be voicing your anger and your frustrations. Don't be voicing your doubts. Don't talk about your fears and your uncertainties. Don't talk yourself out of victory and provision. Your healing is on the way. Don't talk yourself out of the miracle. Even although it feels, you feel trouble and perplexed. The Bible says in 2 Timothy 1.13, Hold fast to the pattern of sound words, which you have heard from me. The pattern of sound words. So she rides on that donkey and she's made up her mind. She's renewed her mind. I'm changing this thing. This thing is going to change in the name of Jesus. I mean, I think on that donkey, it is well. It is well. It is well. And the guy's like, are you all right? She's like, I'm fine. Ray, Ray, Ray. It is well. 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 I mean, one of our members this week experienced something with a baby. I can imagine what has gone through their mind. But God had a miracle. Doctors that weren't supposed to be at home were there. There you're sitting in the front row. Look at the miracle. This can resonate with you. Because your baby almost sat lifeless in your arms. But God knew. God knew. This is not the end. I want to tell you it's not the end. And the last thing she says to this man, she comes to him and says, I'm not going to let you go. I won't let you go until this thing changes. 
I'm going to hold on to your word. I'm going to hold on to your scriptures. I'm going to stand on your promises because your promises are yes and amen. I'm not going to let you go until you come. I'm not going to let you go until things change. I'm not going to go. I'm not going to leave this place. I'm not going to leave your presence. I know things are going to change. I know my, my burdens are going to lift. I know I'm going to get the breakthrough I've been so wanting. I know my marriage is going to be restored. I know the finances will come. I know you will heal my heart. I know you will heal my soul. I know my child is going to be all right. I'm not going to let you go until something shifts, until something changes. I don't know about you, but I've been in many, many, many places or many times in my life where I just held on. I held on. Sometimes I would fast whatever it takes. I mean, sometimes I think I was in law as a young Christian. I didn't know, but I did whatever I could. I just held on to the Word of God and I made up my mind, Father, this thing is going to change. This thing is going to change. This thing is going to change. I'll never forget it. I twisted my ankle. My, my ankle, my ligaments were off. And I'll never forget it in my room as I played. And I said, God, I, I know you've called me to be in this team. I'm a role model for you. I've started home cells. Coaches are getting saved. I can't be out. I'm an ambassador for you. Ambassador for you. I ask you. And I remember... I still put buchu vinegar. Some of you will know that. That buchu I was saying, and the leaves and everything. And I'm in there and I was just like, God, I've had it, please. I can't. I ask you. My ankle was swollen like this. And I remember as I prayed that night, I was in my bed and I said, Father, I know you're the God of miracles. I know. And I just heard my, my, my ligament just go. And I, I felt the healing work of God. I just felt how God healed me. And as I laid in my bed, I didn't even have to look at my ankle. The tears just ran down my eyes. And I just thanked Him. And I just thanked Him for His mercy. I said, Father, all I want is to be an example for You, Father. All I want is to make a difference for You. And I thank You for healing me. This leg, yes, I can play, but I want to play for Your glory. And I want to impact as many players as I can. I ask You, let me run for You. Give me another game. Give me another chance. Just one more, Father. Give me another opportunity to show your, your power, to demonstrate your goodness, to show your mercy, to show your healing power. Give me another chance, Father. Give me another opportunity. There's a man, there's somebody in that stadium that doesn't know you. There's somebody that is not born again on that field. I ask you to use me. I ask you to give me another chance, another opportunity. I won't let go of the hem of your garment because I know that your healing is my portion. Oh, come on, give God praise this morning. And I am confident that this very thing that you have begun, now I want to tell you, church, the very thing that He has begun in your life, the good work, He will complete it. Your spiritual walk is going to complete it. You continue. You continue to be steadfast. You continue to come to church. You continue to be diligent in your sacrifices, your time, your talent, your giving, your sowing to build the house of God. You continue to wake up and pray. You continue to love your wife. You continue, honey, to make him food. Even although he's not interested, you continue to wash his feet and love him. You continue to serve him. I tell you, God is going to turn it around. God gave you that marriage in His very presence and God will sustain it in His presence and by His presence. I want to tell you, oh, come on. God is good. God is a sustainer. God is a way maker. God is a miracle worker. Oh, come on. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. We praise Him. We magnify Him. We glorify Him. He is good. We see that boy, that boy, that prophet came back and that boy was risen. That boy stood up again. That boy rose again. That boy sneezed seven times and got the breath back into his lungs again. As the prophet laid on that boy, life came to him. And Elisha, like a Christ, laid on him. Bible says eye on eye, nose on nose, mouth on mouth, hands on hands, feet on feet. It's like he stretched himself like a cross. And that's what he did for us so that we might live. He stretched himself on that boy. You can read it in the scriptures. He stretched himself out. And that's what Jesus did for us. 
for us who were dead in sin. He stretched himself out. He stretched himself wide. He was broken. He was bruised. So that you might live and have your life back and have your son back and have your marriage back. He took your pain. Elisha, like a, a type of Christ, laid on that boy. Eye on eye, mouth on mouth, hand on head. Until that body began to get warm again. And life began to come in. And I tell you, if you lie and allow God to come and touch you, He can make dead things come to life. And that's what He did on that cross of Calvary. That's why I've been, what I've been preaching these last few weeks. Jesus alive. Jesus alive. This good work, this boy that I gave you, I will finish it. The good work that I've begun, I will finish it. For my glory, not for your glory. I'm going to finish this thing. You're going to finish strong. That desire of your heart, I'm going to fulfill it. Don't put the dream away. Don't put it away. Put it back in my presence. Now, I don't know what you are facing. You put it back in the presence of God this morning. You put it back, 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 back. Come to Him with an open heart again. Come to Him with a vulnerable heart again. And he will heal your soul. He will restore your mind. He will bring sanity in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, as you take your seats. God is here in this place. As we bow our heads and close our eyes. He loves you. He cares for you. Now, I don't know, like this young man that passed away and died. But all that woman knew is to bring him back into the presence of God. Now, I want to tell you, your life might be broken. You might be bruised. But I want to tell you, he was bruised for your iniquities. He was chastised. He was wounded for you so that you can have life. As you're sitting in this place, God is all over this room. Say, Pastor, I want to give my heart to Jesus Christ. I want to give my heart to Him. I want to tell you He loves you. Will you give your heart to Him? And that's you in this place. Say, Pastor, I want to give my heart to Jesus Christ. If that's you, won't you just slip up your hand? I want to say a short prayer for you. Won't you just slip up your hand very quickly? Thank you. Come on, hands going up everywhere. So I want to give my heart to Jesus. Come on, just slip it up high. High and unashamed. Lift up your hand. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Maybe in this place and you're wayward. You're wayward. Maybe as time and months and years have gone by. I don't know what has happened. Experience some losses. But he's here this morning to love you. If that's you, say, Pastor, I want to come back home. I want to pray for you. I want to say a short prayer with you. Won't you slip up your hand this morning? I want to pray for you, please. Please give me that opportunity. Please slip up your hand. I want to pray for you. Thank you. Slip up your hand. You say, I want to come back home. I will trick you for him. Come on, Akhla. I want to come back home. If that's you, lift up your hand this morning. Thank you. Many hands going up everywhere. Lift up your hand. Thank you. The love of God is in this place. I want you to all I want you all very quickly to just stand as we're going to make it possible as believers are praying for many who have given their hearts to Christ to come to this altar. If you lifted up your hand, maybe you wanted to lift up your hand. Maybe through an encouragement of a friend or a family member, you would come down to this altar. But I want you to take your Bible, your personal belongings and come to this altar. I want to say a short prayer for you and lead you to God this morning. Come on, it will be the greatest privilege. Come. Come forward. Come. 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 Give your heart to Jesus. Come. 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 Come forward. Come forward. Come. Come. Give your heart to Jesus. Come this morning. Come, we'll wait for you. Come. It's not a walk of shame, it's a walk of victory. Come, we'll wait for you.
wait for you. Here's my life very slowly on the piano. Listen, the presence of God is here. He loves you. You know, sometimes it took me so long to come to the front because I was so worried about people. So worried what people would think. And I want to tell you, it's not what people think, it's what God thinks. I'm sure when that lady with that dead son, maybe we sit in a dead life. We're so worried about what people are going to think. You were more worried about the stench of what's going on in your life than the God that can heal your life. I want to tell you, if you need to be at this altar, won't you make your way? Come. We'll wait for you. I don't want us to clap. Just come. He loves you so much. He loves you so much. He cares for you. Won't you take that bold step and say, Father, I want to give my life to you. Come. Step out of your seat and come. It's not a walk of shame. It is a walk of victory. Thank you. Come. It's a walk of victory. It's a walk of victory. It's given your heart to Jesus Christ. He'll change you forever. No man can change you. No accolade. No another wife, another drink, another business cannot change you. You'll never be fulfilled. So many people are searching. We look at the celebrities out there. Everybody is searching for something. You know, I listened to another celebrity and he said something interesting. He says, when you can buy everything, and everything's accessible for you, you start to search purpose. Because I have everything. And money, that money can buy. And you can't buy happiness. You cannot. You cannot buy joy. You cannot buy peace. Peace. Where you go home and there's a peace in your soul. You cannot buy it. No money can buy it. You can be a billionaire. I've sat with billionaires and the pauper. The beggar. We all need Christ. He brings peace for your soul. And I want to say to you, those who came to the front, the greatest decision of your life. I cannot save you. I can only lead you to this amazing Savior. And I want you to put your hand on your heart. Forget about the people around you. And pray this prayer with everything that's inside of you. The Bible says, open up your heart and the King of glory will come in. It is the greatest privilege for me to pray for you and lead you to the Savior. Pray this with all of your heart. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God that you died for my sins on the cross of Calvary and that God raised you from the dead. Come into my heart and forgive me of all of my sins. I ask you to save me right now in Jesus' name. Thank you for forgiving me of all of my sins, of all of my wrongdoings. I am made whole right now. I receive your Holy Spirit to guide me and lead me into all truth. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Amen and amen. Come on, He loves you. He cares for you. We want to say a short prayer for you. We love you. I don't call people out. God has a great plan for your life. I want to say He's not finished with you. He's not finished with you yet. He's not finished. He's not finished. It's not the end. Amen. We want to say a short prayer with you. Give a book and a Bible. Would you allow us to do that? We people just like you. We're not going to do anything strange. We just want to help you on your journey. So could you be so kind and turn to my right, your left. Just go with the altar workers. We're going to give you a book and a Bible. Amen. Just turn to my left, my right, your left. Come on in Jesus' name. Come on as we clap our hands as they go. Amen. You may take your seats. Amen. God is so good. Amen. You received the word this morning.